What's the most hurtful thing you've overheard about yourself by accident? My wife had a falling out with some friends of mine that she met through me. We had known them a long time but I had known them for much longer. I was upset with her one night because they were always asking why she never came around anymore. But she absolutely refused to see them. I always thought it was because of this little side business project they went into together that didn't work out. So I'm driving my wife somewhere and I just start getting upset with her that she won't make up with them and move past it like they did. And it sucks that she never comes with when I go over there. So she finally broke and told me the truth. Every time she went over there without me, they would talk sh about me, putting down my personality, my humor, and much more. I guess they thought she would be okay with it. Like a joking haha my husband can be such a, insert something, right? But she wasn't okay with it. She's not a confrontational person, so she never really spoke up. But she was disgusted by the way they spoke about me behind my back, and refused to have anything to do with them. She had been letting me think it was all her fault and she took it because she knew the truth would hurt my feelings. And it did. And to be clear, my wife was not manipulating me. She's not a manipulative person and she's certainly not the type to try and control who I do and do not see. I know these people and I know they're capable of this. Even though they're otherwise generally good people with faults. Everyone has faults. Irks me a bit that there are so many cynics out there. Have a good holiday. Regardless. Went out to a bar with some friends for a birthday party for my ex-girlfriend. She really messed me up when she left me. Like really bad. But I was trying to be nice since she invited me so I figured I'd go out and be there for a drink or two. So... A mutual friend who had been broken up with a few days before and was there. So as I made the rounds I talked to her and tried to do whatever I could to let her know it would be okay. I'm no therapist, but I did my best ya yeah, know. I knew what a bad breakup felt like, as I was also going through one. So I tried to help. Anyways, after I left the table I overheard her talking to my ex at the bar about me trying to give her advice and she said, Well nobody has ever loved him so what does he know about any of this? And they started laughing. Don't think they know I heard. But I grabbed my coat immediately and took a long walk home. I don't need people like that in my life. Haven't willingly seen either of them since. My dad saying he expected my twin sister to do great things. Not so bad until he followed it up with I don't know what we'll do about. My name. Though. He still doesn't know I heard that and I plan to keep it that way. I had just moved into my dorm for my second year of college. My roommate was my best friend since 9th grade, my stuff hadn't arrived yet, and it was my time to register, so I asked him if I could use his computer. He said sure. I sat down, and he had aim open to a conversation with another friend of ours. I didn't scroll up, but from what was just visible on screen, they were talking about how weird I was and how awful it would be rooming with me. I closed it so he wouldn't realize later I'd seen it, registered, and left. We still lived together that year, but we didn't hang out at all. We just cohabited. I never asked him to hang out as friends. He never asked me. Move out day that year was the last time we spoke. That was over 10 years ago. We chatted every day for 6 years. Then haven't spoken since. I still don't know if I did or said something to flip how he felt about me. Or if he never really liked me to begin with. The possibility of the latter really fs up your future friendships. Hell, the former does too. Knowing apparently you're capable of unknowingly saying or doing something to throw away a 5 year friendship. Everyone I'd invited to my first sleepover laughing while reading my diary entries about how my dad had been abusing me. I'd left the room and one had gone snooping. It was worse when they wouldn't stop or give it back when I burst in and pleaded with them too. Then everyone laughed even harder. That was the first and last time I wrote anything real like that in a diary. Heard my mom complain about the Christmas gift I gave her a few years back. Seems small but idk it just hurt. I went to school with a black eye and busted nose from my dear old dad. Child services was called to do a home check. My dad and mom told the worker I'd done it to myself and I was suicidal and that I'd written in my diary that I wanted to kill my little brother. I didn't even have a diary and of all the people I was close to, my little brother was number one. It got me a black array and an involuntary stay in a locked ward. I bailed a sap. When I was a preteen, 
I posted a picture of myself online with a minor celebrity. I later found that it was reposted on a message board and the majority of the comments talked about how ugly and pale I was. The only person who said anything nice said don't say that. She posts here sometimes and she's really nice. My father said he was too busy to come see us on Christmas. I told him my two year old had picked presents out for him. I was also going to announce my second pregnancy. I was at my brother's house when my father called to offer my brother a ride to the airport Christmas morning. The airport is less than 5 minutes from our house. I was 7 and basically poor trailer trash. But I asked my friend if I could stay the night. He called his mom to ask and I overheard her say tell him no. I don't want roaches and lice. Really cut me deep. To this day I have extreme anxiety about keeping my house clean. I couldn't help it I was poor. And our roaches didn't pay rent you be. While not a mean comment this comment killed me. I have epilepsy and I overheard my parents and neurologist talking about some of the effects if my seizures continued. Which were basically becoming dependent for everything. Short and long term severe memory loss. And my eye dropping a lot. It really hurt hearing that in a few years I would have gone from honors classes to special ed. Thankfully my seizures have stopped and the only lasting side effect is some memory loss but man that sent me spiraling for a long time. My dad's friend telling my dad that I, F16 then, was not that good looking. Asked him if he had saved up money to cover for that in dowry. Money exchanged by parents to the groom at the time of marriage. Since that day no one could convince me otherwise. I was sick, septic, dying in the ER at the local hospital. I had tubes coming in and out of me. I had IV antibiotics. I didn't know if I was going to make it through the night. My family was at my house and my niece who was with them called the house and put them on speaker. I heard my mother telling them all how she didn't care about me. Never had. She was only there to make sure my nephew was okay. That I got dirty diseases from being gay and sleeping with everyone in town. No. It wasn't an STD. No I didn't get it from sleeping around. And I haven't bothered with her since. I phoned my friend and asked him if he wanted to hang out. I was maybe 10. He said he had to ask his mom. I heard him say, Lazarus 870 wants to do something. But I don't want to see him. I guess he either thought he muted the phone or did a shtai job at muffling it or something. Then he came back to the phone. Sorry my mom said I can't. He was a terrible friend over the years. My stepmom saying I was useless, heartless, abusive, leeching, etc. When I couldn't get my dad a birthday gift and instead painted something for him. I was like 16 at the time and had no money. Couldn't get my mom to buy something for her ex-husband and stepmom never wanted to get to know me. To my grandma. Actually pretty sad as art was still a big deal to me at that age. And has changed how I've seen her as a person. I saw two girls that I roomed with for a short while in college had been publicly posting on Facebook about how weird, annoying, and disrespectful I was. Their reasoning was that I was taking an 8.30am class and only weirdos do that, and that I made a ton of noise every morning and disrupted their sleep. It hurt because I tried really hard to not be disruptive. I wouldn't let my alarm go off, because I woke up naturally around the time it was scheduled and would just turn it off before it beeped. This was partially out of anxiety. I changed clothes in the bathroom, tiptoed everywhere, and wouldn't even eat or zip my backpack in the room because I wanted to be quiet. As far as I knew, neither of them woke up any of those mornings and they never said anything to me about it. My father truly crying to a friend that he ruined the possibility to leave anything to his sons, Marizo, that he wished he had listened to me about how to spend money. He's dying likely gone in the next 2-5 years due to multiple strokes, diabetes, heart attack, and Agent Orange. I love him. And it fine hurts to think all he cares about even in all his suffering, is that he has nothing to leave us. My boss mocking me to my entire team. To be fair, I was being a bee but it wasn't without reason. The product I was working on was not working as intended so I kept getting farther and farther behind overall. When I brought up my concerns with production potentially contaminating my product and causing it to behave incorrectly he told me that the product wasn't the problem. I was because I wasn't working fast enough. I got extremely frustrated because I had zero support on this. 
massive pressure and needed to get this done so with frustration tears running down my face I snapped something along the lines of, okay, fine, I guess this is just how we do business now, I'll push it through, an hour later I heard him behind the hoods in his most high pitched, condescending, mocking, girl voice to everyone I work closely with, I'm the only female in on my team, repeating, okay, fine, I guess this is just how we do business now, I'll push it through, while he incorrectly recounted our conversation making me look really bad, the worst part though, there really was a problem with production, it was a huge one and he took credit for discovering it, my team does not respect me anymore after that, I'm now just talked down to, it feels so horrible that I let my emotions get the better of me just once and in the matter of 5 minutes everyone's perception of me changed so drastically that I can't get anyone to take anything I say seriously. It has gotten so bad that I'm looking for another job and I'm willing to take significantly lower pay just to escape the emotional female ghost that now haunts me. I'm probably blocking out the worst cases. I've learned it's pretty much human nature to talk trash about anyone who isn't present. So no reason to take it personally, but when you're a kid it's a miserable experience. The worst case recently, I have a weird neurological problem in my shoulder and arm that no one has ever been able to diagnose during an intense flare up I was referred to a physical therapist by a friend. The therapist saw me once and recommended surgery. I was very reluctant to take this advice, but I didn't say no. I called the surgeon she recommended turned out he wasn't accepting new cases. The second appointment there was a scheduling error and I arrived 30 minutes too early I sat in the front of the office and listened to the therapist making small talk with another patient about how her next patient was a psycho trying to fabricate some kind of malpractice case and refusing to comply with her advice. The receptionist was sitting right in front of me, also listening, but she didn't run back to stop it so it went on for quite a while. If I had been a psycho trying to manufacture a legal case against her, she was kind enough to do all of the work for me.